You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Is your pet stressed out? Does your pet need annual vaccines? Which pet is best for a child? Would you know if your dog was in pain? Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor, where you'll learn everything about keeping your pet healthy and happy. From pet care, pet meds and grooming, to pet food, pet insurance and dental care, this is the place to find out everything there is to know about pet wellness. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets. It's your pet. Health matters. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Welcome to the Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. I'm Dr. Diane Levitan. Thank you so much for listening to us on The Pet Doctor. Today we have a really exciting topic. It's one that's so special to me, but it's not one that's familiar to many. It's this really exciting but terribly underutilized field of hyperbaric medicine. I know you're saying to yourself, hyper what? No, we're not talking about bariatric medicine or weight loss, but we are talking about scuba dive tanks, dive tanks, oxygen chambers, and the incredible healing power of oxygen under pressure or hyperbaric medicine. It's not something that every vet will have today, but they would if they understood the value of it. You as pet owners are going to demand it. I know you will. So please stay tuned to listen to the veterinary hyperbaric medicine expert. He's a board certified veterinary internal specialist in neurology and a veterinary internal medicine specialist and a surgeon, neurosurgeon. And he's probably the most experienced small animal veterinarian in the world with hyperbarics. In my eyes, he's a pioneer. This is Dr. Ron Lyman of the Animal Emergency and Referral Center in Fort Pierce, Florida. He's an author, a lecturer, a teacher, a pioneer, and a Willie Nelson fan, an all-around really great guy. This will change your expectations from your family veterinarian, and you will likely be able to teach them after listening to us today. We'll be right back with this valuable information and with Dr. Ron Lyman right after these messages. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly right after these messages. Buster, you're telling me my dog food products can't go on your shelves? That's right. Didn't pass one of my Petco certified nutrition checklists. Sorry, Wayne. Who made these checklists? Geniuses. Very smart guys. Well, it's good enough for most grocery stores. Do you see cheese puffs on my shelves? Mayonnaise? Soda pop? No. That's because I ain't running no grocery store, Wayne. Your pets will get better nutrition, I guarantee it. Petco, where healthy pets go. Enter the code DOCTOR10, D-O-C-T-O-R, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. I play tennis because I love to, but inside, I want to win. Take away the court, the net, I might not be a player, but I'll always be a competitor. Lady Foot Locker understands that. Lady Foot Locker, the first to carry Adidas off-court shoes and the gear that goes with them. If you play your best, there's no regret. Lady Foot Locker, one place. Every woman. Go to ladyfootlocker.com and enter the code AFDOC1LF to get 10% off any order of $50 or more. Or enter the code AFDOC2LF to get 15% off any order of $75 or more at ladyfootlocker.com. Would you like your business to reach out and invite in our audience? We have a brand new trademark concept called Info Seeds. Info Seeds are short 20 second seeds of information about your place of business, practice, or service. Is the best, most cost effective way to invite us in. We only have a limited number of slots left. For more information, visit the website PetLifeRadio.com. Click on sponsorship information. There you can listen to a sample of Info Seed. Remember, only a limited number of opportunities are available. Hi everybody, I'm Megan Blake here with my sidekick, Super Smiley. The giant mutt and spokes dog for throwaways. You're listening to Pet Life Radio and I'd like to tell you about our brand new show, A Super Smiley Adventure. Our show explores adventures with animals. They can be traveling, out in the world trips, or inner journeys where our animals lead us to inspiration and self-discovery. Or just plain fun adventures. Join us here on Pet Life Radio on a super smiley adventure. Good boy. 
Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. I'm Dr. Diane Levitan, board certified internal medicine specialist in Comac, New York at Peace Love Pets Veterinary Care. And now with us is my esteemed colleague and I'm proud to say my friend, board certified internal medicine specialist, neurologist, neurosurgeon, veterinarian extraordinaire, Dr. Ron Lyman one of the few veterinarians in the world today who have embraced the practice of hyperbaric medicine and one who continues to share his knowledge and skill not only with his lucky patients but also with us. He's one of the world's veterinarians who can pass on the skill and the expertise to us so that we can offer it to our patients, us meaning lots of other veterinarians. Thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Lyman. Well, I'm. thank you so much for asking because I'm always, always willing to talk about uh, the option of hyperbaric oxygen therapy for a variety of different clinical problems that happen with our patients. So what is hyperbaric medicine? Well, in essence, what it is is the inhaling of oxygen while you are under pressure. We are at sea level and we're... That would be me every day. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Yeah. That's true. We're at sea level, sea level one atmosphere approximately of pressure. Well, when you increase pressure inside of a chamber, for example, you can increase it to raise it to higher atmospheres. And a hyperbaric oxygen chamber will typically increase pressure somewhere between one and a half to three times of our typical one atmosphere pressure. If you inhale pure oxygen at these higher pressures, it is dissolved into the fluid of your blood, the plasma of your blood. It is not just carried in the red blood cells as is the usual. Instead, it is now floating around in high concentrations. And so when it goes out into the body, it can diffuse out from the fluid of the blood further out into the tissues then can the oxygen which diffuses from the red blood cells. So if you have an area of inflammation, an area of swelling, an area of disease that cannot get oxygen from the usual source because of this tissue swelling, now it can get oxygen because that oxygen from the plasma is able to go out four to five times further into the tissue, reach the cells that need it, and the cells here. That is incredible. It sounds very technical. Is there a way to summarize it in a little bit more simple way? (laughs) Oxygen under pressure, inhaled under pressure, goes into your body and reduces pain, inflammation, and swelling, to put it simply. Very cool. So how is that different from scuba diving? Because if I go down 90 feet, am I at three atmospheres of pressure? I I get asked this all the time. And yes, you're going to go down and you're going to get higher and higher pressure the further you go down. And you're going, though, typically to be inhaling a mixture of gases and not pure oxygen. Because if you did inhale pure oxygen and you inhaled it for too long of a period of time at those higher pressures, it could actually become toxic. And, you know, divers, of which I'm not, divers, though, they report sometimes when they go down very deep that they start to get lightheaded and they start to have hallucinations and these sorts of things. (laughs) It's not a recreational thing, but it does happen. Yeah, exactly. And so... I've, I've been asked by people, well, then, if I want to do this to myself, you know, why don't I just, you know, dive with pure oxygen? I said, do not do that because you cannot control the dosage that you get because right. too much oxygen is not a good thing either. Right. So you have to do it in a controlled fashion and in, in a controlled dose. Right. And so how did you actually start utilizing this technique? Well, it is truly one of those stories that... I still tell, and it was a turning point, I had working with us here at this hospital a board-certified internal medicine specialist, 
and we were working together on a case of severe pancreatitis, severe inflammation of the pancreas in a dog. And the very bad cases very often die, no matter what type of conventional treatment that you give them. Yeah. And we were attempting to save this dog's life with everything that we had, and we were just watching him get worse. And she turned to me and she said, you know, you need to get a chamber. And I said, what are you talking about? As is still the case with most people and most physicians and most veterinarians, you know, yeah. they, don't, they don't have a clue. What are you talking about? And she goes, well, I've worked in this place in California and they had a hyperbaric oxygen chamber and it is absolutely the only way that you can help save some of these severe pancreatitis dogs. And that tweaked my interest. I would that say dog, so. Yeah, that dog, unfortunately, it did it did go ahead and pass away, the one we we're talking about. But I was determined, and so I learned more about it. I called the uh, veterinarian in California um, who had the chamber. We talked about it. We talked about the different types of diseases that we could use it for. And then I found a chamber in upstate New York, actually, from a human hospital that went out of business. Wow. And had it inspected and shipped and tested and installed, and that's the chamber that we continue to use today. That you taught me on, actually. Thank you that's so correct. much. That's <laughs> correct. And um, it still, you know, of course, it still does a wonderful job. These, it's really, it's not rocket science. It is essentially a chamber. This particular one has clear acrylic to it on the, all the top of it, so that you can you can see in and the pets can see out and. It simply has a source of pure oxygen flowing into it that raises the pressure to whatever you set the desired pressure to, and the patients go in the chamber, and you turn on the oxygen flow, and you monitor them and watch them, and you put them in. Usually, takes about 10 to 15 minutes to come up to pressure, and then you treat them for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then it takes them another 10 or 15 minutes for the pressure to come back down. You do this gradually so that they can adjust, just like you would fly in a plane when you go up and down. You can feel your ears pop, and this is the sort of thing that our patients, whether they be people or animals, I'm sure, are feeling. So they feel a little bit of pressure, or like when you dive, whether you snorkel or you a scuba dive, you can feel that pressure on your ears and you have to equilibrate. Right. And that's essentially how it works. That's so neat. So can it be used on any animal? We are learning that we can, as far as we know, use it on any animal. We don't have any animal exclusions. I do know that, for example, it is, there's a lot now being used in large animals. And we were always worried about putting cows in one of these chambers. Of course, this would be a very large chamber because of the methane <laughs> gas issue. Oh, but yeah. they, uh, in fact, are starting to do that at the University of Tennessee and have had no problems with it on cows. So it does have an application to you know, all the different species, of course. Now, I understand that there are hyperbaric chambers big enough for horses. Yes. And, and what, is, what would they use it on horses for? Well, for the same sorts of things that we use in small animals, wound healing, uh, tendon healing, fracture healing. They use it in horses that have the problem, the race horses that tend to bleed. When they have a race, they'll sometimes bleed and, uh, out from their lungs, and they'll use it in the treatment of that issue. And actually, there are now, under the direction of veterinarians, there are large horse chambers that are used after horse races in a series of treatments along with regular physical therapy to get the horses ready for the next race. They do not use it immediately before a race. And in fact, a couple states have put regulations to that regard that either give a 24 or a 48 hour time before a race that you would not use the chamber. And of course, they're thinking about not letting these horses have an undue advantage over other horses. So using a chamber before a race could give them an advantage. This is theoretical, and um, there is no science or research that shows this, but they just want to make sure it doesn't give them an unfair advantage. What advantage it does give them is what there are some human athletes that use the chambers, and the advantage is, well, they get the horses like the human athletes. You know, they run very fast. They turn 
extremely strenuous exercise, and so you can imagine that the joints and the tendons and the ligaments sometimes become inflamed. And of course, because it is an inflammatory process, one of the treatments that you can give to help it is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And so these horses can recover faster and get ready for their next race. <laughs> so it's being used in that fashion as well as in a medical fashion. That's phenomenal. So is it safe? Are there any dangers to using it? You were talking about methane before. Well, again, that, that's not a theoretical danger that has not ever been shown to be an actual danger. And now they are using it, the large animal people are using it in cows. If you have too much oxygen for too long at too high of a pressure, it could actually be toxic to your brain. You would, could start to have a seizure, okay? And that is still a rare occurrence, even at typical pressures in humans and in small animals. And so we've seen a handful of seizures happen to the patients over what I think is now something like 20,000 patients wow. treated. Okay, 20,000 sessions at least, um, not necessarily patients, but 20,000 sessions over many, many, many patients. And we still see a ha handful of seizures. They are very short. They have never had any after effects or sequela that we've at all recognized or been informed of. So too much oxygen can cause a toxicity. So you must give it like you would any other treatment. You give it in a measured amount and in measured times. It's a very powerful but wonderful treatment. Yeah, I have to agree with that. There are, right. a, couple, there are a couple of drugs that you have to be careful when you give hyperbaric that you don't give it too soon after the drug because it actually can make certain drugs more potent. And wow. These are just some technical things. Wow. Well, we've learned so much already about how it works and the safety of hyperbaric chamber and when we can use it. And we have to take a break right now, but we're going to continue learning about the amazing capability that veterinary hyperbaric therapy can offer us. And we're going to discuss the common reasons to use it, when not to use it, where to find it, and much, much more with Dr. Ron Lyman, veterinary internal medicine and small animal hyperbaric expert, right after these messages. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash doctor, D-O-C-T-O-R, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more at PetMeds.com. Whether they're big, small, hairy, or whatever, you're going to need gear for your feet. And Kids Foot Locker's got all the great shoes and gear that'll get you in the game. Go to kidsfootlocker.com. Enter the code AFDOC1KF to get 10% off any order of $50 or more. Or enter the code AFDOC2KF to get 15% off any order of $75 or more at kidsfootlocker.com. And cover those funky feet. Celebrate your special occasion and give her this classic semi-eternity band created with one carat brilliant diamonds channel set in 14 carat white gold. Exclusively yours from ice.com. Free shipping over $150, free returns and 30 day money back guarantee. Go to ice.com and use promo code ACTFP and get 20% off your purchase or use promo code ADTFP and get 20% off at diamond.com, ice.com, or diamond.com. Get 20% off from Pet Life Radio. This year, Americans are expected to spend a jaw dropping $36 billion on their pets. From lighted leashes to high end spa products, 
the discriminating pet owner can find just about anything to pamper his or her pet. Hi, this is Michelle Fern. Join me every week for Best Bets for Pets, where we'll talk about the latest pet products and talk to the companies that make them. Best Bets for Pets, every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to the Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. We're back and we're so glad you stayed with us. You won't want to miss this information. I'm Dr. Diane Levitan and we're speaking right now with Dr. Ronald Lyman, board certified internal medicine specialist, expert in the field of veterinary internal medicine and neurology also a neurosurgeon, and also the pioneer in veterinary medicine for hyperbaric medicine. And he's likely used this modality more than any other veterinarian, that, at least that I'm aware of, maybe one or two others in the country. But he truly is a pioneer. And we've been discussing what hyperbaric medicine is, how it works, and its safety. But now please share with us the most common reason a pet would maybe need this type of treatment. Severe inflammatory processes. And the examples here are um, in Florida one of the most common things we use it for is severe snake bites or snake bites. And that, of course, course causes a very severe and marked inflammation. And even with antivenin, there's often a lot of skin and tissue that dies and is lost. But if you employ the hyperbaric oxygen therapy, along with the standard therapy, it's still good and important to use antivenin. You can reduce the swelling in almost all cases immediately. You can actually see, and we have pictures of the dogs, where they usually get bit in the face in Florida, and um, their face is all swollen, and you can literally see if you get them into the chamber very soon, within a few hours, you can see the swelling come down right after the first treatment. Amazing. And we, we almost never have any skin sloughing or any loss of tissue anymore when we add the hyperbaric if the people allow us to do this treatment. Wounds, very common. Big wounds from where the skin is sheared from being hit by a car, let's say, or burns from a house fire. Very, very large wounds. We had a, a dog that was bitten by the other dog in the family with a huge, huge wound that we've been treating over the past few weeks. And instead of having to do surgery after surgery with skin grafting and flaps, most wounds can be treated by just keeping them clean and giving hyperbaric oxygen therapy treatments. This causes the wounds to close and heal much faster than they would without hyperbaric oxygen. It has been shown that new blood vessels grow rapidly into the tissues much faster under the influence of hyperbaric oxygen therapy than without. So that's one of the methods that wounds close so fast. We talked about pancreatitis as a severe inflammatory process. That's a very common case that is treated in our hospital. Corneal ulcers that are difficult to heal. This is another common use. We post-operatively, very common, let's say a dog tears a a knee ligament, it's called a cruciate, and has a surgery. Very commonly, their legs or their knees are swollen after the surgery. It's pretty standard in our hospital to give them one or two hyperbaric treatments right afterwards to help bring the swelling down and get them using the leg faster and makes them more comfortable. Head traumas, spinal traumas, and one of the things that we are really excited about Veterinarians in our area have realized that it can be very useful for the neurologic damage that occurs after a cardiac arrest. So let's suppose uh, you know a patient has a cardiac arrest after an injury or after an anesthesia or during an anesthesia, and of course there's a short period of time before they're revived, and there's a period of time that their brain has not received as much oxygen as it should. It is very effective treatment to get them in the hyperbaric chamber as soon as possible, and it can dramatically improve their neurologic response. Amazing. 
Yeah, it's wonderful for cardiac or cardiopulmonary arrests. We are beginning to use it in certain of the immune-mediated diseases and in diseases in which we are attempting to stimulate stem cell production and release. There are very good studies that show that hyperbaric oxygen therapy multiplies the body's own stem cell numbers, your own numbers that you deliver out of your bone marrow, they are multiplied. And so if you're treating with hyperbaric, you can multiply the stem cells and they could go somewhere in the body that needs repair, such as an injury to the spinal cord or an organ that is diseased to improve the rate and the extent of recovery. So these are some other types of cases that we will use hyperbaric oxygen therapy in. Amazing. So I would imagine that in any situation where there was where oxygen circulating to the tissues would be a amazing use for it. For instance, even heart disease maybe or pneumonias, things yes. like that. Absolutely. Well any of the of course the advantage is uh, in the case of heart disease or pneumonia, it's one of those spiraling problems where, you know, you have the disease and then you have the sequela or the effects of this, the disease, and then that makes the disease itself worse. Right. So the example is if you got pneumonia, well, the problem is you have an infection in the lungs, and so now you can't even get enough oxygen delivered to take care of the rest of your body and to heal. You are able through the parts of the lungs that are still functioning, when you give hyperbaric oxygen, you are able to raise that oxygen level in the blood, supply the rest of the body, and allow the rest of the body to help to heal the part of the lungs that are affected by pneumonia. How much would you say? Is it 20% more oxygen? Is it 100%? How much more oxygen can get to tissues when the, when the oxygen's under pressure than would if it wasn't under pressure? Well, there are various tables, okay, and there are tables in there. These things have been well worked out in human beings, not really worked out in animals yet, but well worked out in human beings. But you can deliver up to just roughly somewhere between 15 and 25 times more oxygen to cells when you are giving hyperbaric oxygen therapy. That's amazing. Can you imagine? It's going to kind of depend on where the cell is, how far away it is from the blood vessel, because the hyperbaric oxygen, and I think this is important to let the listener understand, because this is what I thought first when I heard hyperbaric oxygen, that you were, you were just pushing this oxygen into the body, you know, by putting yourself into a pressurized vessel and then pushing it right through your skin into your body. No, it has to be inhaled and dissolved in your lungs and it has to get to where it's going through the fluid of the blood vessels. So that's how it gets there. It doesn't come in from the outside. Right. It comes in through the bloodstream. Right. That's why you can't just put your hand in there. Yeah, <laughs> you have exactly. to breathe it. Yeah, exactly. Now, there are chambers, but these really just are not workable for animals, including they've tried them sometimes with horses. There are chambers on the human side where the chamber is pressurized or the, even the whole operating suite is pressurized. In some other countries, they have these. Or they used to have a building in the United States, actually, I believe it was oh, in the right. 1920s. Yeah. <laughs> the whole building of five stories was pressurized. Amazing. And if the individual is in, puts a mask over their face and inhales pure oxygen, then you are getting hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Okay. So there are large chambers for people where you're not enveloped in pure oxygen, you are just under pressure. And then if you want to take your treatment for an hour or it's time to take your treatment, then you hold that mask with 100% oxygen right. up to your face. And now you are getting hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Under pressure. Very cool. So how long does it take and how do, what do you do? I mean, how are you going to put a patient inside this tube and well, why would they hold still for you? <laughs> the great thing is, is that very honestly, nine out of 10 have no problems in the chamber whatsoever. They just go into the chamber and they just sit there and relax on the on their you know their cotton blanket and they just chill out, so to speak. And so what you do is you check them, you take their temperature, you make sure they don't have a, a fever which can raise their oxygen levels to levels that you don't want. You make sure their temperature is acceptable. You 
wipe them down with a wet cloth. You want to reduce static. You don't want, of course, sparks, okay, in there. <laughs> you take all measures so that you don't have any kind of a chance to develop a fire because it's pure oxygen. And you put them up into the chamber. Sometimes the small ones will be very comfortable putting them into a small carrier, like a pet carrier. And then you close the chamber, turn on the pressure. It gradually brings them up to pressure over 10 or 15 minutes. And a technician monitors them and watches them and makes sure that everything is going well. Give them their 45 minutes or an hour treatment. Large animals treatments are often a little bit longer than that. And then you reduce the pressure gradually over 10 or 15 minutes and they're done and out. Every once in a while, one very anxious patient will require a little sedation before they go in. And that patient would likely be the kind that would be anxious no matter where they would be. Anyway. Right, right, right. So how many treatments do they need? I mean, say they have a brain injury, would they just go in one time or yeah, how does that work? This is the question of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, and it's the question with every case. And the answer is, it is totally dependent on the individual case. Example, we have some snake bites where their face is all swollen up. You put them in one time, the swelling comes down, that's it. It doesn't go back up again, they do fine, okay? We've had a little dog a few years ago that was caught in a recliner chair, a little puppy. <laughs> And it got caught in a recliner chair. Nobody knew it was there, of course. And the people sat down and whoop, bang, you know, and he had head trauma. And simply, he was not conscious. He was laying on his side. He could not get up and walk around. He came, he went in the chamber one time and they set him down and he walked away. Okay. And that was it. <laughs> so you. But that's not have, typical. No, it's not. And you have cases where there are wounds that are very, very, very large wounds and they may go in once a day or twice a day for a week and then once a day for a week and then three times a week and you continue the treatment along with whatever other standard treatments are typically given you continue the treatment until it's obvious that you've reached the desired effect and so it's quite variable dependent upon the end of how serious the problem is and the right. period of time that it's... So everyone's takes. an individual, and you're going to have to just kind of figure it out as they go along. Now, obviously, that's going to take someone who's got experience and knows what they're doing with these kind of machines. So tell us about the availability of this to the public. Well, there are not many veterinarians, either small or large right now, that have hyperbaric oxygen chambers. But there are chambers to be had. There are chambers that are human chambers that are, you know, new and used on the market, there are chambers that are, there are companies that are developing chambers for veterinary medicine to be sold on the market. And you can, a veterinarian can purchase a chamber right now and install it into their hospital. Well, and I know that because I actually did that. That's right. <laughs> and so it's possible and hopefully in the near future, it will be possible to do it in a much, much more economical fashion, which will allow more veterinarians to have the chambers because Actually, there are instance after instance of things that happen in routine veterinary practice where the hyperbaric chamber might be employed. For example, in any kind of a surgery that a veterinarian does to repair a fracture or, as we talked about earlier, a knee surgery or an animal with an infection that they're treating. Right. And it can be used along with standard therapies in everyday veterinary practice. It just needs to make it to the point where, let's say, where lasers are starting to make it. And, right. you know, as some of the people that are listening might know that there are now many, many, many veterinarians with various types of surgical lasers and therapeutic lasers that are coming into the primary care of veterinarians' practice. Well, I could tell you that in our area in the Northeast, I only know of the one chamber here on Long Island for small animals. So I know that it's not out there yet, but I'm hoping that information like this will help our listeners ask their veterinarian about it and hopefully encourage them to learn about it. I actually went in one several times just to see what it felt like and to reduce some inflammation. And I had I thought it was the best thing ever. I mean, it just felt phenomenal. So yeah. it's certainly nothing dangerous and not scary for me. And I doubt it would be for the pets either. They seem to do so well in there. 
I wish we had more time to talk about this. I can't tell everyone how much I believe in it and I know how important it is for it to be out there. And I'm just hoping that we can educate. A lot of times, you know, the pet owner can educate their veterinarian and lead to something that's very important. So hopefully all of you listeners will take this information to your vets and ask about hyperbaric medicine. But you can also learn about it more on Dr. Lyman's website, animalemergency.net. Is that right, Dr. Lyman? That's correct, yes. He's got a lot of excellent articles. Some he's written, some he lectures around the country about it. I'm sure he wouldn't mind an email or two, which I can forward to him. But I want to thank you so much for this information. And, of course, I want to thank Mark Winter, our talented producer, who always helps me make this show possible. Without him, it wouldn't be here. And if you want to learn more about Dr. Lyman and hyperbaric medicine or to read any of his fabulous articles, you can go to animalemergency.net. Or if you have questions um, for me, you can go to my website, peacelovepets.org. Or you can email us at thepetdoctor at petliferadio.com. We would love to hear your comments and questions. This is a fabulous topic of hyperbaric medicine, and hopefully it will be one of many that you will hear in the future. But you heard it here first on The Pet Doctor at Pet Life Radio. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Lyman. Thank you, Mark. And hopefully you'll hear from me again soon. Pets can be a wonderful addition to your life. Keeping them healthy and happy is important. Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets. The Pet Doctor, on demand every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com.